Okay, what do you want to do for the intro? No intro. Let's just start it. Let's just go. All right, today's video is gonna be about uh, five ways to find customers. We're gonna give you a couple stories of places that we've found mm -hmm. customers in unlikely places, and hopefully you can use those same sort of uh, ideas when you're looking for customers too. So before we get into it, the first thing, like this is this is the major key of the video. You know how when you run into somebody at the grocery store that you haven't seen in a while, and it's like, hey man, how's it going? And you're like, oh, I'm good, are you good? Change that conversation instead of saying like, oh, I'm good, how are you? Something kind of pointless. <laughs> yeah, change it to something that means something. So like, hey man, how are you doing? And you're like, I'm great. I just got my woodworking business off the ground. Things are doing really well. How are mm -hmm. you? That right there sets the tone of the conversation. It's just one little tweak if you can just learn, literally rehearse that line in the mirror if you need to. Mm -hmm. But just replacing that, hey, I'm good. How are you? With, hey, I'm trying to do X, Y, Z. How are you doing? You're gonna realize very quickly that a lot of people are looking for nice custom furniture. My buddies and I use this exact same tip in Los Angeles, going all over, filming everything. He had a video production company, I made websites, and my other buddy was a photographer. And we just made that one switch of, hey man, we're trying to get this video production company off the ground. That one line got us in so many cool places. That got us into a recording studio, into exotic cars, into music video. It was just, it snowballed from there. So. Yeah. Just make that one switch. Uh, my buddy's actually still in LA, so if you want to follow him, I got a link to his channel right here. Um, he still does all that cool stuff, films exotic cars and music concerts and stuff like that. So. And you never would have known unless you said something. Like you ne would have never had any idea that the conversation could go that direction. You you have absolutely no idea who is connected to whom until mm -hmm. you open your mouth and kind of let them connect the dots for you. So. Just make that one switch and you'll be way better off. All right, so the first story that we have is we're getting ready to pack up the shop. We've got all of our tools are pretty much put away, ready for packaging. And one of the things we realized is that we have a bunch of extra wood over here that we just never got around to building the projects. We never got around to selling what we were gonna build with them. We have three to four cookies. Uh, we've got a, a live edge slab we need to get rid of. And so what I did is I just opened my phone and I started scrolling through the contact list and just reaching out to people that I hadn't texted back in a while or just people that I haven't seen in a couple of days, just saying, hey, I've got some extra wood. If you're interested in buying something, hit me up. Uh, super discounted prices, we're about to leave, everything must go sort of you know, thing. Don't make it cheesy, but that's kind of what I did. I just scrolled down my phone list. So the first tip is if you open your contacts and just scroll them you know, A to Z, I bet you you could go halfway, what's halfway through the alphabet? Uh, so it's 26, 26, half of that is 13, A, B, C, D, E. I bet you between L and M. L and a half. L and a half. <laughs> you can find at least 10 people that you can reach out to that you know are in your local area that you maybe haven't talked to in a while. You can call, catch up, and just say, hey, started my woodworking business, started my furniture business, was interested if you were looking to find furniture or if you knew anybody else that was. I bet you you could find at least 10 people that you could just call and catch up with, if nothing else. Um, and that may lead to more stuff in the future too, so you never know. All right, so the second place we've found that is really good to find customers and people who need furniture built for them is work. So the first time this happened to me when I got a request at work, I was literally just sitting in my office and my friend Waldston sat down and just goes, do you think you could build me a desk? I was like, yeah, of course I could build you a desk, no problem. What do you want it to look like? And right then and there, we got into some of the details of what she wanted the desk to look like. We got her a proposal, it ended up working out, and boom, she had a desk, and she absolutely loves it. And then from there, people heard that I had built her a desk, and they wanted other things. And it just kind of started to be this snowball effect that word got around really fast throughout the office. Um, that's kind of how office settings go, I feel like. When one person finds something out, they spread the information. Before you know it, it's some big spider web. It's called gossip. There's a word for that. Except it's not like bad. Gossip is like, I feel like bad. No. Good gossip. Good is gossip. Is that a thing? Yeah. Good gossip going around the office. And before I knew it, I did. I had more people coming in. Another time we had somebody come in and ask us for a retirement plaque. There was somebody that had worked there for years and years and years and everybody liked him. They wanted to do something really nice, throw him a big retirement party. And they came and asked us, said, hey, we want to make them this huge plaque. We want it to be solid wood. Um, we'll do the engraving because at that time we didn't have our X-carve or any sort of laser engraver. And they said, we just don't know where to order something like that from. 
and I said, hey, we got gotcha. you, absolutely. So we made them a huge, what was it, like two foot, not even like three foot by one and a half foot um, solid cherry plaque. From then on out, we were known as the people who made the retirement plaques, who made the going away plaques, who made signs. And whenever somebody needed something like that, they came right to us. And the other nice thing about selling at work is the fact that everybody pitches in a couple of bucks, right? It's usually not one person buying that entire retirement plaque. So you don't have one set person that's complaining about your prices because everybody's pitching in a little bit of money. It seems doable and you're not gonna have a lot of complaints that way. So due to that whole snowball effect of everybody spreading the word that we were the retirement plaque people, we did start getting a lot of jobs. We got a ton of requests and honestly we started getting so busy that we couldn't make all of them so we had to raise our prices and that's really what you need to do. Your free time is very valuable. That is the time you spend with your family. That is the time you spend with your friends. So when you're getting so many jobs that you don't have time to build everything, that's when it's time to raise your prices. So when you do raise your prices, that oftentimes means you will get a lot more no's. People are gonna reject your prices sometimes. However, when that happens, you should be balancing the prices you're charging, the money you're making with your free time. And once that comes into balance, you know you've hit a really good number of projects you're taking in. That way you don't start to hate woodworking. You don't start to hate your hobby, your business, because all of a sudden you're making enough money to where your free time is worth it. And also you have few enough projects to where it's manageable. All right, so another place that a really good place to find jobs is any clubs or organizations that you're a part of in town. Very similar to the work scenario Jenny just explained. We also had another, like, I guess a retirement. Somebody who was the head of this organization was stepping down after many years and everybody wanted to pitch in and give them uh, some sort of a retirement gift. And it was really nice. At this point, we had our X carve as one of the first projects we did and we were able to do everything from going up the boards to planing it smooth, to engraving it, to painting the letters in and then finishing it and then delivering a final product. So we made a lot more money um, just on the margin because we weren't outsourcing the engraving to another guy in town who had like a laser engraver. So that was really fun um, just to see a little bit extra money from that, even though our price was a little lower than what we normally charge because we didn't have to outsource. Anyway, reasons and numbers and stuff, but that's also a really good place to find work because not only do you get to do things for the organization, whether that be a fundraiser, you get to auction something off, like put your branding on whatever you're giving away or auctioning off and people will take notice. One of the best things about clubs in town is that it mixes incomes, right? Think of like a Boy Scout troop. You've got everybody from really low income to pretty high income in most areas. That's just a really good way to meet people that might be in a different economic class than what you're used to selling to. So when you make a really nice ornate gift or when you make the trophy for something or a commemorative plaque and you put your branding on it, you know, maybe some of the richer parents are going to take notice of that and then realize, hey, I'm trying to buy a brand new kitchen table that's custom made and all that sort of thing. So just keep an eye out for that. And if you want more information on like how income varies and why you should chase uh, higher levels of median income, uh, check out our video on that. It's up in the corner here. Number four, another really good one. We drive by this every single day. We don't have kids, but we drive by the park where there's a couple of baseball diamonds and T-ball's going on right now. We drove by just yesterday and we saw that they were having some sort of a T-ball tournament outside. And uh, it was it, just the light bulb went off for us of like, hey, they every kid gets a little five, six dollar participation trophy. Now, my opinion on participation trophies is for another video, but if somebody's gonna spend the money, if they're gonna buy them anyway, they might as well buy them from you. So we were just thinking like, what if we built a tiny little plaque and sold it for four or five dollars each for each kid. That would be a really cool thing. Put their sports team on it with their logo and the year. Like that would be really easy to just crank out on the X carve. You can even do multiples at the same time and then cut them all out on the table saw and then router the profiles. That right there would be five, ten dollars a plaque and it would be something handmade with the kid's name on it and stuff like that. So that would be a really cool option. Get that perfect cross section of every income level when you play something like t-ball. So you get the, you know, the lower income kids and the higher income kids, everybody's parents are standing on the sidelines, hopefully, and you can start to talk with them. This is also a really good area that you can start to just work on your sales skills. You know, talk about them, talk about their kitchen, their life, their house, and oh, you just moved in, do you need any more furniture, something like that. And if they look at you weird and they're like, oh, this dude's trying to make a sale, my kid's playing t-ball, and they walk away from you, 
Who cares? You're probably never gonna see them again. This is a really good area for you to go get your butt kicked, to get used to rejection, and really just start to build your skills as a salesperson. This is something we preach in the courses and our videos. You need to have a really good portfolio. Have everything on a platform like Instagram where you can literally just pull it out and in two or three seconds, have your Instagram pulled up and you can just show off all of your cool stuff on Instagram. Follow us on Instagram, Jenny Davis. <laughs> That's a, that's a really great way to just kind of get your butt kicked and, and get some reps in with your sales. Okay, so if all the people we've talked about in tips numbers one through four don't work for you, you're just not getting anybody to bite, tip number five we have is referrals. If the people you are talking to directly don't want or need anything and you're just kind of getting rejected there, ask for the referral. I mean, I'm sure they have friends that would want something just because they don't want a custom kitchen table or a coffee table doesn't mean that they don't have a friend that just moved into an apartment, just bought a new house, wants to refresh all of you know their look for their living room or anything like that. There are so many options. All you have to do is ask. It is, it's as easy as, hey, I understand you don't want anything. That's totally fine. I get it. But do you happen to know somebody who might be interested? So that's number five, ask for referrals. Bonus nachos. We have a bonus tip for you guys. So tip number six, our bonus, is repeat customers. Just because somebody only bought something from you once doesn't mean they won't buy from you again. We get most of our work from repeat customers. We'll make them one thing, they love it, or we'll make them one thing and they want everything else to match. And there you go, you've got five follow-on projects just from making one person a sign or one person a table, something like that. So super easy, it's just going back, talking to those people that you've already discussed work with and bringing it back up, seeing if they need anything else. Also, when you deliver the first item you make them, take note of all the other furniture they have in their house. That way, when you call them back and you say, hey, how are you liking your coffee table? And they're like, hey, great, I love it. It looks awesome in my space. You can say, I also noticed that that corner right by the table, yeah, behind it, looks a little bare. I think it would be awesome if we built you a custom bookcase to put there that also matched your table. What do you think about that? And then they're like, yeah, that would be really cool. So just by taking note during a delivery of all the, all the furniture somebody has in a room is another way to get a repeat sale. All right, go down in the comments. Let us know if there's anywhere that we didn't mention that you know is a great place to find customers. We'd love to have you help us and share and just help this community grow and, and make some money. So thanks so much for your help. Okay, so all right. the fastest outro ever because we're about to go into the next memory card. So. Uh, in summary. I feel like an idiot for asking this every single time, but please like the video. It really helps us out a ton. There's a huge difference from when I ask and when I don't ask. So I guess See, I'm just gonna keep asking. To ask. Yeah, ask I gotta ask. Referral. Anyway, if you think we've earned it, please like the video. Also hit the subscribe button if you're new to the mm -hmm. channel. We'd love to hang out with you and share what we know. And uh, everything that we talked about today will be linked in the description, any channel, uh, Instagram, stuff like that. Yeah. You can also check the cards at the end of the video. They're gonna be right over there. And uh, I think that's all. And we've only got 30 seconds left. So anything else? Uh, no, that's it. Okay, bye. Bye. My thighs are burning from that sword squat.